What we can see here is an environment that Bionic has analyzed. So we have an agentless process that goes and discovers all of your application services. We can then also map out all the dependencies of these services and how they're interconnected. So we can see this JavaScript service actually accesses Twilio. And so Bionic can map out your entire application security posture and show you all of your attack services and dependencies. Um, and if this changes through a code change or a configuration change, we're gonna update that for you. One thing we can do is we can ask what the risk score is so we can scan the posture and the architecture for risk. So you can see here we've got a WebLogic service that's got 97 as a risk. So what we're looking at here is it's a compliance risk. The reason for that is it's actually accessing PII data. So we can see from the data flow that it's touching this DB2 instance and the fact that it's exploitable because that, exploitable because that tracker service is internet facing. So what we can do is we can look at the details and we can look at all of the violations that's been detected. And we can actually say, well, show me all my unencrypted channels. You can ask kind of questions like um, violation types, unencrypted communication. And now Bionic is gonna show us all of the unencrypted communication. And if we zoom in, we can actually see the payments processor applications are all communicating, not using an encryption. And so that's kind of super important. Um, so at a high level, we can now start to see the data flows and the violations. We can also do things like show me all third party services that my applications rely on, and then we can filter the map. We can then sort the map. And here's all the third party applications my, my developer and engineering teams access. And then I can say, show me all the services that connect to these services. So now I can start to see, uh-oh, like I've got some services that are have high risk that are actually accessing third party services. And then we can actually start to group all of this information by, for example, cloud provider. So now we can zoom in. We can see we got a private cloud, we've got an Azure cloud, we've got AWS. And then up here, we've got a third party cloud provider. And so now we can look across different clouds and we can look at where our applications are running and the dependencies between the two. We can then also overlay regions and zones. So if you wanna know which applications are running in what region and whether you've got failover, you can get a granular view of all of your application with, with this logical grouping. Um, you're not, you might not want any of that. You might just say, show me my business applications, in which case now we can show at a high level how the business applications communicate. And again, we can drill in and we can see what's going on there. One thing we can also do is we can show you a bill of materials um, for each service. So we can provide exactly what's going on for every service. So this tracker service, we can show you where it's deployed in the cloud. We can show you all the security violations. So you, for example, it's not using input validation, which would break CIS. It's not using encryption, so that would breach PCI. And also it's got reused credentials and that would violate NIST. We can show you an entire change log for this particular service. So if you wanna understand Drift, so for example, um, when this service starts to create new dependencies or it's accessing new libraries like struts or for example, a, a different version of Log4j, we can show you that. We can go into the data bases and the tables that this service is using. We can even go down to the columns and that's how we infer the data flows. Um, we can show you all the APIs that are exposed by this service, the dependencies, and then all of the libraries that make up this particular service. So in recent events, we could say, what version of Log4j is this using? And we can see it's 2.14. All of the violations and risks are stored here. And we provide out the box integration. So you can open Jira tickets and then assign it to a particular Jira instance, give it a title and then assign it to it to your engineering teams. We also finally have a query engine so in the particular events of, of Log4j, I could say, show me all services that use libraries with the name Log4j. Click run, there's eight services. Bionic also has lots of integrations. So we integrate with your cloud providers. That's how we're able to hook into the environments and do our scans remotely versus using agents. 
We can also integrate with Chef Jenkins um, server provisioning. So if you've got already CICD pipelines where you want to embed Bionic, you can configure it that way. And then we've also got integration with Jira, ServiceNow, and also Azure DevOps. So you can create tickets and automate workflows. So you can take the risks, the critical risks you see in Bionic and automatically assign them to Teams.